Hello and welcome. Uh, this is What It's Like to Be a Parent, a podcast show of kind of storytelling questionnaire of literally just that. What is it like to be a parent? Uh, I am your host, Mike, aka The Mecha Man. I do do some streaming from time to time, uh, but that's not what this podcast is about. This podcast is literally about the parenting tips, stories, uh, and experiences that we all tend to go through. Um, the Pretty much the nuts and bolts of what it is. Um, but for me, uh, since I'm the host, this is episode one, uh, we're going to pretty much do an, the interview of me in this sense. Um, and we're going to kind of start it off. Uh, for instance, uh, what it was like before kids. Um, if you saw or if you saw or heard the uh, pilot episode um, you would know that I have one child uh, she's now 23 months old um, almost two um, but what was it like before we had her uh, our kind of I guess montage or uh, not montage uh, for me and my wife kind of like what our demographic was was me and her uh, we were able to go out to restaurants more we were able to uh, pretty much go and hang out with friends there was it it's not that a child tends to weigh you down but it you feel a little bit more free uh, kind of like first time in college uh, there's new and different experiences that uh, you feel like you are able to go get up and go and do uh, you want to go to the gym you go to the gym. You want to do this, you go do this. Uh, but, you know, if you're married, you sit there and you kind of discuss, hey, I want to go to the gym. And it's like, okay, not a problem. We're not doing anything. So you kind of just go to the gym. Or uh, I'm going to go to the store real quick. Okay, I'll join you. And you just you pack up and you go. Um, so it kind of was just one of those uh, more free kind of in a, a more free ability to go do things um for us we you know we want to go to disney world we saved money and we went to disney world just like that it was it wasn't you know that wake up in the morning all right let's go let's go we're gonna be leaving in about 30 45 minutes i got dressed she got dressed we just kind of got up and went um but when we had our daughter, uh, we kind of sat there and it's like, all right, we want to go to Disney World. We literally, we get up, I get myself ready. Or I get up, go get the child, wake her up, change her diaper, get her dressed, sit her down, give her a little bit of breakfast. <coughs> As I'm doing that, my wife gets up, gets dressed, you know, gets herself prepared. All right, now we tag off. I go and get the diaper bag ready and all the stuff else that we need ready. Okay, now that's done. Now my wife goes and gets some food for me and her to get ready. Now I got to go clean up and change the child and then get ready. We both eat. We gather everything, put it in the car, put her in the car, and then go. There's quite a bit more steps to pretty much every trip that we go to do uh, when it involves having the kid uh, when you don't have a kid there's less steps it's just me her we eat we leave um, with our daughter it's a little bit more steps and it's not bad steps it's they're they're not bad steps it's not like oh okay you know let's now we got more stuff to do no it's it is we have more stuff to do but it's not a daunting oh my god why did I do this <coughs> Um, so yeah, before kids, it's literally more liberating to be able to go and do, a uh, friend calls you out at 10 o'clock at night and you just kind of go out at 10 o'clock at night and it's, it's not a thing. Um, pretty much like that. Uh, what was the expectation that we had going through the whole pregnancy? Um, For us, my thought was pretty much like what it is in a TV show. Um, 
everyone kind of comes over. There's a the village raises the child sort of thought, um, which isn't bad. Uh, you know, parents coming over, her parents coming over, we're able to just kind of sit and uh, do. Um, hey, can you come on over so that, you know, we can go and do this? Or can we want to come over to do this? And it was literally, like, my thought was like a rotating thing of people that could come and watch. Uh, that was my expectation. What really kind of went down was like, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, calling up my mom pretty much a week in advance or calling up her parents a week in advance. Hey, can you come over this weekend so that we can go grocery shopping? It's not that it was hard to go grocery shopping with her, but when she was first born, it was every two hours of a sleep, eat, change diaper cycle. And with that, you really can't go and do anything well, you can, but you just got to keep that in mindset every two hours or every hour and a half or every three hours. It's this perpetual cycle of like, all right, we just fed her and she's asleep. Put her in the, put her in this car seat. Go do this mid grocery shopping. Stop and take care of it. It makes certain tasks or trips a little bit longer than what you think. Uh, and my expectation was not quite like that. Uh, I, I actually because our grocery shopping trips could range from 30, 45 minutes to an hour. And with with our daughter, it now peaks upwards towards the two hour mark, uh, depending on a changing during, during the time, um, which does happen from time to time. And you just, you learn to start going with stuff, just kind of like, okay, well, I gotta do this now. And so you kind of just, you do it. You just kind of have to go with it, sort of thing. Um, <coughs> so my expectation wasn't really... It's not that it wasn't met. It was met to an extent, and then some other things. Uh, so you kind of keep that in mindset of, like, what is your expectation of being a parent? How do you expect yourself to act or react? Uh, and the way me and my wife prepared for that was we sat down and we talked like how are we gonna raise our child? What is it? We're gonna do what is it? We're not gonna do um, And it It did it just kind of went like oh, okay This is what we're gonna do and Okay, well, we we can't do that now. We have to regroup and redo try something else um, and one of the other things that we did for preparing was after about three months in, we kind of sat there and went, this one's going to stay, so let's do stuff to prepare. Uh, leading up from three months till nine months, you know, the, the due date, we got pretty much everything. Uh, every grocery shopping, we got diapers and wipes, diapers and wipes, diapers and wipes, diapers and wipes. Uh, because we were told you can never have enough wipes. And truth be told, you can never have enough wipes. You pretty much use them from everything from wiping your child's face, wiping their butt, wiping their other private area, uh, cleaning their hands, cleaning the surface that they ate off of or will eat off of in preparation, uh, cleaning the cart that they sit in because the ones that they offer you at the grocery store are a chemical bleach uh, wipe. Very chemical based. Um, and if you're okay with your child, I'm not judging. If you're okay with your child, after you wipe something with, say, bleach or Clorox or, you know, any of those chemical-based wipes, and they go, eh, with their mouth and tongue all over it, that's you. Me and my wife, we didn't. We sat there and we used our own wipes, which are the more sensitive skin, which I read into it. It was all pretty much plant-based chemicals. <coughs> or plant base uh, cleaners so I was like this is a little bit better um, she eats it she licks it it's pretty much plants so I was like okay well it's plants and plants extracts as opposed to in a lab or some other chemical like bleach or whatever else is in Lysol and I we do we do still tend to use it for everything like I I have two sets of wipes in my car. My wife has two sets of wipes in her car. Uh, we wipe 
pretty much every surface that we think that she's going to be putting her mouth on. Uh, just because it's like, you can never know. Uh, and they also kill 99% of bacteria. Just saying. So it's pretty much uh, another safe bet for that. Um, but I ended up having a closet full of wipes. A closet full of diapers. Um, and we went through that in three months. I'm just going to put that out there. I had, I literally counted them all uh, in a little pouch, like pretty much a big, say like two and a half, three inch high pouch is uh, like 70, no, it's like a hundred wipes or so. I calculated, I had like 5,000 wipes. I'm like, oh, 5,000 plus wipes. Okay, that's going to take quite a while. Three months. We bought the five box or a five package set of wipes every time we went a thing of diapers of different sizes because we didn't know how big she would she would end up being <coughs> and it ended up being not enough wipes to what my thought was okay and we continued after she was born we continued buying wipes it wasn't like okay we bought all these wipes we're done no we continued buying wipes we were done at three months and we went oh my god we have to sit there because after she was born it's like all right well instead of the five pack we can sit there and go down to the three pack and just kind of you know windle down that way well that only took three months and we were just like okay now we need to sit there and like buy more and We've had to go a couple weeks doing it of like, we need to keep on buying wipes, we need to keep on buying wipes. Um, so, having the the crib, having a bassinet or playpen, because uh, we got the playpen that has the bassinet, and she slept in that for... <sighs> Let me see. Uh, she started sleeping through the night at six weeks. Uh, and then towards the end of that, like after six weeks, it's like, okay, she's starting to sleep through the night. We put her in her own, in, uh, her room, which was adjacent to ours, but it was still her room. Um, cause we live in an apartment and we, we had that monitor as loud as it can be the first week, like pretty much the first, the next whole month. Uh, we all, we both find, kind of fell asleep with that thing in our face going, what's she doing? What's she doing? What is she doing? What is she doing? And just fell asleep with it right there to watch her sleep. Uh, I ended up having the monitor kind of hanging over the top, looking straight down at her. Um, because as first time parents, we didn't know what to do. Like we were, we were going off of what other people say and what the doctors say. Um, which is something that you you tend to uh, tend to do you kind of sit there and take what people have to say and digest it and move on um but that's that's kind of how our life changed of <coughs> we are doing this we are doing that uh and then kind of you know, our, our, that's pretty much how life changes, is, you know, you're, it's the two of you being able to plan and go and do stuff, and now it's the, the three of you, where two people plan and have to prep and take care of this other one to go and do stuff. Uh, so it's, it's mostly a, a time thing of like, okay, well, in order for us to leave the house, it's pretty much like an hour, hour and a half to in order to leave. Um, just because I get ready, she gets ready, we get the little one ready. Now we get the little one ready again because we gotta get the, the everything else ready. And it's like, okay, let's do another diaper check just before we leave, just to make sure so that way she can last for a while. Um, and that's that's usually a good thing to do. Um, the struggles that we have as a parent and a couple still, uh, there are there are a few arguments, there are are a few disputes, but mostly it's a communication error. Um, I say one thing, she says something that's pretty much the same thing, or we take what we say the wrong way because we're, we can't really hear. Um, and it is. When a baby cries, it is extremely hard to hear each other talk. Just general talk. We're having a conversation. This screaming thing is in your ear. I can't hear you. Can you please write it down and like get back to me? Or you know, hold that thought. Uh, and you kind of have to. 
and I have to learn to hold that thought or hold that uh, conversation on a pause moment to move on. Um, and with with the little one, uh, we came to an agreement before she was born of how we're gonna raise her, and we are sticking to that, like because that's there. It, it equaled out to being both our views. Um, some people spank their kids, some people don't spank their kids, and uh, we kind of tended to try to use that as more of a last minute sort of thing, uh, or and it's it's more of like a just a spank or a smack smack the back of the hand. Uh, it's nothing nothing too hard. Um, I know people are going to probably comment or yell at me for, oh, will you hit your kid? I was spanked as a child. My brother was spanked as a child. My wife was spanked as a child. So spanking is a form of discipline. Uh, we kind of tend to try with the timeouts. Uh, we kind of tend to uh, do some other things. Um, my wife just got home. Uh, so, um, some of the things to look out for. This was a moment that I had a slight sidebar conversation with my wife, uh, and I'm coming right back in just a moment. Some of the things to look out for are well, pretty much everything. Uh, children will bump their heads, children will get into pretty much anything and everything if it's at however tall they are, however far they can reach, they will be able to get into it. Uh, for the first pretty much almost year because it takes pretty much eight months or so uh, before they can walk. Once they're walking, then you really have to kind of start changing where you put everything else now. Um, but they do learn certain boundaries um, until now where she's starting to push her boundaries. Uh, for instance, you know, when she was still crawling, it was easier to, okay, well, she can't really quite get into the cabinets. Well, she can't really, you know, reach the remotes that sit on the table. Uh, then she starts doing this standing thing. Now she can reach the remotes. Now we got to move the remotes. Um, or give them their own remotes. Fake remotes. Um, certain doors you wanna uh, keep closed, keep them closed. Uh, and it's not, that's that's not a hard task to do. Um, actually, very recently, she learned to climb and up, up and over the baby gate, which is a uh, rather concern because it's like, okay, well, we need a little bit of space here, we need a little space there in order to do dishes or laundry. And it's like, we put a baby gate up and she's able to climb over it. That's not a good thing. Um, and at two, she's being a little bit defiant on it. So it's it's a little bit of things to work, work out on. Um, tips that I have for you when you go to have a child is don't wait till the last minute. Uh, if you wait till the last minute in order to have diapers, you're not going to have enough. If you wait till the last minute to have wipes, you won't have enough. If you wait till the last minute to have a crib, it's gonna. you're probably going to sit there and stress over, oh, well, this crib doesn't do this or this crib does this. Um, it's having a checklist of certain things that you need to do like have wipes, have diapers, have a diaper bag, have a uh, car seat, have a stroller, have a bassinet if you want that, and pretty much check one off week by week. Um, my wife, uh, check one off week by week and uh, just kind of go and do them. I apologize. Uh, I did have a slight uh, intermission uh, with my wife for a conversation real quick. Uh, I'm back. Um, 
you probably didn't even notice on the recording, uh, but for video, you probably did. Um, so those are some tips, you know, you literally cannot be prepared enough uh, until uh, the child arrives. Uh, even if you're adopting, you can never be prepared enough because you don't, unless you've gone through it, you don't really know certain things to expect. Um, so it's just, th those are some tips of... Uh, to consider and go by uh, another set of tips is we we got told pretty much by everyone that has kids you need to do this you need to do this you need to do this uh, and with so many people saying do this way or do this way we literally kind of sat there and thought in our head of well that sound that sounds a little ridiculous uh, we listened to the doctors of what and took what people said asked the doctors when we were there able to ask the doctor and they were, they would give us their input uh, we didn't really want to have too much of someone else's input because then in our thought it was we're raising our child their way uh, we took what everyone said digested it talked it over this is a good idea this is not a good idea let's put our own spin to things because it is our child uh, it didn't really matter uh, anything else um, another thing is if you are going to have someone else watch your child they need to know the expectations that you have as a parent for how you want your child to be raised uh, and that's an important thing is it is your child. Have them raised your way. <coughs> um, like, uh, for instance, uh, my mom and stepdad came over or her parents came over. Oh, well, it's okay if this... No. This is our child. We want her raised this way. If you do not... If you are not going to follow this... And we had typed out rules. We typed them out. We put them on next to the door uh, for everyone coming and going to be able to see uh, we even had some rules for the cats you know do this do this feed them this make sure there's food and water uh, scoop once a day sort of thing uh, and it was mostly for us as a reminder uh, and for you know my mom and stepdad or her parents uh, to follow as well like anyone that's coming over these are the rules do this after a certain time quiet hours you know like certain things like that uh, for instance, one of the rules is after every poop, do uh, diaper cream. As weird as it is, it's like that was one of our rules and it's like just continue to do it. I really don't care if it's red or not, just do it this way. This is our child, just just do it. Just entertain us and do it this way because this is our child. Uh, that's something that we ended up implementing is having that list. Um, and we both told our own parents, hey, if you're not going to follow this list, then you can't come over and watch our child. Um, and when we put it that way, they were off put, but in the same regard, they went, yeah, okay. Like, you're an adult. I'm, I'm sorry. This is your child. We will do it this way. Um, and that's actually something that you don't ever stop doing. Um, is let them know hey do it this way this is this is our thing um so yeah um this one's a little short um i'm still trying to iron out uh questions and uh the flow and suggestion of certain things on it uh so feel free to uh let me know what you think uh, in comments or uh, in ratings. Uh, I'd greatly appreciate that. Um, I am Mike, aka The Mecha Man. I do stream. Uh, if you care to follow the stream and ask any other questions there, you may. Uh, I am The Mecha Man, T H E M E K K A M A N. Uh, you can like and follow me on pretty much any social media uh, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Mixer. Facebook and 
YouTube. Uh, this is where the video of this podcast will be, is YouTube slash The Mecha Man. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you on that. Um, possible next episode is storytelling or uh, I'm going to interview my wife possibly next. Um, still up in the air for that. Uh, I do appreciate you listening and or watching and I will catch you guys next time. Bye. Bye.